So now we're going to take a look at how to find statistics, not so much from raw data, but from a graph, specifically a cumulative frequency graph, or when we get to example nine, a cumulative relative frequency graph. Uh, we spoke about cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency in chapter one. Uh, we had the zigzag method when we had, again, when we were given the data, we would zigzag to create the cumulative frequency column or the cumulative relative frequency column in our frequency distribution table. And we're gonna switch lenses, same concept, but we're gonna use a graph instead. And if you remember from chapter one, whenever you have cumulative graphs, your, your Y values always increase as you move left to right because you are accumulating data. We're looking at, at data in terms of an on-down lens. Again, cumulative frequency is from a certain value of your variable on down. So from this graph, uh, we're gonna find the median and the IQR. So it's not too terrible to find medians and IQRs as long as you got a cumulative graph. So let's, let's start to explore that. And again, as I read this, the first thing I want us to discuss is what is the variable in this problem? So this is the cumulative frequency graph shows the height of 150 Norway fir trees. What is the median height of the Norway fir trees and what is the IQR? So in terms of identifying the variable, when you're given a graph, it actually makes your life a little easier. You can see the variable is right here on the x-axis because it's height of trees. Now it's in meters, we're in Norway, so they're on the metric system. It's not feet, something that we're familiar with, but it's meters. So I'm gonna put here that my variable is the height of these trees. and the units in that are meters. All right, and so you see my cumulative graph increasing as we move left to right. Also take note that the, the y-axis is labeled with cumulative frequency. So these numbers are not percentages, these are whole numbers, right? We had 150 Norway trees and you can see that the highest y value culminates at my sample size. And we, we saw that happen in chapter one with those tables. When you get to the bottom cell in your cumulative frequency column, it should total out to the sample size. So we see these heights, or excuse me, these cumulative values increasing as height increases. Just, if, just because, I wanna just take a look at this one right here. Let's look at this ordered pair and just try and interpret it, put it in a sentence. If this was a math class, we would say that the x value is 0.65 and the height is 100. So I'm just gonna, scribble this right in here. So if I'm thinking of this as 0.65 comma 100, what that's saying is there are 100 trees with a height of 0.65 meters or less. So out of all of these 150 trees, there's 100 of them where their heights are 0.65 meters or less. And I say the or less because this is a cumulative frequency graph. So I wanna write this in a sentence. There are 100 trees with heights of 0.65 meters or less. But the key phrase in there is the or less. All right, that's the cumulative part. Now again, I just picked that point because it was on the grid and I wanted to say, for example, okay? It doesn't, you could pick any point on here. I just, that one looked like it hit right on a grid mark. All right, so let's start to address this. What is the median height of Norway fir trees? If we think back to our definition of median, when you have an even number, an even number of observations, you should have two middle values. And the two middle values should show up somewhere between the 75th and 76th observation. So I'm just gonna take note of that, that the median will fall between the 75th and 76th observation. I'm gonna scrunch that in there, I kind of ran out of room. Uh, I would technically take the average of, of these two observations. 
that was the definition of, of the, the median, middle number, and if there's an even number of observations, two middle numbers take an average. And that's all fine and good, but the, the cool thing about a cumulative graph, if you ever want to find the median, go up the y-axis to that number, right? There's 75, right above it would be 76, and we're just going to approximate here. But let's go see what height that corresponded to, right? So this is a version where I knew the y value, the y value was 75, and I needed the height that went along with that. If you look at the, the wording of the question, it's saying, what is the median height? What x value goes with this y value of 75? So I'm gonna reverse engineer this ordered pair. I'm gonna look at 75 and see what x value that went with. All right, so if I drop this down, To me, that looks like the median height is around 0.62. So I think my median is about 0.62 meters. And you didn't even need to calculate that half of 150 was technically between the 75th and 76th percentile. You can just graphically, if, if, if the y-axis is this tall, go halfway up. There's your medium. Your median is always halfway up a cumulative graph. All right, so then let's try and address the IQR. So we picked up that formula that IQR is the third quartile minus the first quartile, right? High quartile minus low quartile. Now this is all fine and good, but when you talk about cumulative graphs, you're looking more at percentiles than then quartiles. So I want to rephrase this as this is the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile, right? Because if we remember, third quartile could say 75th percentile, first quartile is a 25th percentile. But another way of looking at that is, again, the median, excuse me, the Q1 is the median of the first half of your data. So if this is the first half of my data and I want to cut it in half again so that I can get the first 25th percentile and the second 25th percentile, I'm looking right here. And that's around the 38th observation if you keep taking half of a half. So half of 75, it's, it's going to be around the 38th observation. And the same deal is going to happen for Q3. It's the 75th percentile, but really it's the median of the upper half of my data. Here is the upper half of my data. There's the median there. So I'm really looking at the 113th observation minus the 38th observation. All right, and again, this is just taking those numbers, cutting them in half, cutting them in half again, pending that I had them all in numerical order. All right, and so if I, if I wanna take a look at this graphically, again, if my bottom half of my data is here, let me do halfway. This looks like to be about halfway along the y-axis. So I wanna see what x-coordinate that corresponded to. So when I look at that, I think the median, excuse me, not the median, I think Q1 is about, I'd say 0.58. If I'm doing this, let me write, this looks to be 0.58, this looks to be 0.62. So I'm gonna say that my Q1 is about 0.58. Let me go see what Q3 would have been, or the 75th percentile, again, it's the median of the upper half of my data. So if my up, the upper half of my data takes three squares along the y-axis, I'm gonna go one and a half of those to cut it in half. So I think my Q3 is right around here. Let's see what X value that corresponds to. So if I'm looking at that one, that to me looks like it's close to 0.67. And you might be off a couple of decimals here and there. That's, that's fine. Um, so if I just wanna label these real quick, this is Q1. This is my median, here's Q3, okay? So if I'm continuing along this idea, the 113th observation, my Q3 looked like it had a height of about 0.67. And it looked here that my Q1 was about 0.58. 
When I subtract those two numbers, I'm going to get 0 0.09. And the units are meters. The units of all of your statistics, so the units is the value of your variable. And if you don't like this shenanigans, right, the 113th observation minus the 38th observation, or the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile, to just take a step back, think of it this way. Anytime you're talking about Q3, you want to go three-fourths of the way up your y-axis and see what x-coordinate corresponded to it. If you're ever talking about Q1, go a quarter of the way up your y-axis, see what x-value corresponded to it. If you're talking about your median, go halfway up your y-axis, see what x-value co uh, corresponded to it. So when I give you either a percentile, like a median, quartiles here, if I give you any kind of cumulative number, whether it's a frequency or a relative frequency, head up the y-axis and see what x-values correspond to that. So another way of saying um, this ordered pair here for, if I want to expand upon this, right, this was 0.67 and then we had 113 here. So this says 113 of those Norway trees, Norway fir trees had heights of 0.67 meters or less. So 113 trees were 0.67 meters or shorter. That was the 75th percentile there, or at least my approximation of the 75th percentile. Along that same line, I can do the same mechanics in example nine. The only difference that we have between example eight and example nine is that example nine is given in relative frequency or cumulative percentages you see here along the y-axis. So when you see cumulative percentages, you know these are cumulative relative frequencies. This stands for 0%, this stands for 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. So let's take a look at this, okay? And we're going to identify the variable. So below, the cumulative relative frequency plot shows the height in inches of college basketball players. So I can read it right here. There is my variable, right? It's height, continuous numerical variable, it's in inches. So I'm just going to write this off to, to the side so we can start to get used to this. Variable is height of basketball players, and the units are inches. Okay. So I have the same two questions. What's the median? What's the IQR? All right, so the median. Median goes with your 50th percentile. We could also call it Q2, but it's the 50th percentile. So you have a percent. The y-axis is the percent. Go up to the 50th percentile and then see what corresponding x value the 50th percentile had. So let, let's do it. So again, I'm given a percent. I'll go up the y-axis. I'll go halfway up because I want the median. And let's see what number we're looking at. So when I go halfway up, I think I am looking at about 74 inches. So again, median, I could call it Q2, but the numerical value of it is inches, 74 inches. Because again, they're asking you for a value of your variable. What is the median height? So this is saying that Half of college basketball players are 74 inches or shorter, and half of them are 74 inches or taller. This is the median, all right? Continuing along that, let's find the IQR, right? We're still looking at Q3 minus Q1, and especially with these cumulative relative frequency graphs, I want the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile, okay? Well, with the cumulative relative graphs, it's even easier. For the Q3 value, we're gonna go up to 75% along the y-axis because the y-axis is percentage. This is a percentage. So let's go up 75% and see what the corresponding height was. So if I'm looking at Q3 and I count, to me that looks like 77 inches. So this is going to be 77. For Q1, 25th percentile, so I'm gonna go a fourth of the way up that y-axis, or 25% of the way. 
And let's see what the corresponding x value was. There's Q1. So that looks to be about 71 inches. This problem's a little nicer. They fall right on the grid marks. Another way of saying this, if the 75th percentile is 77 inches, it means 75% of college basketball players are 77 inches tall or shorter. Or I could say 25% of college basketball players are taller than 77 inches. Right? Here I could say 25% of college basketball players are 71 inches tall or shorter, right? 71 inches or less. All right, but if I'm finding the IQR, which was what I was tasked with, I'm gonna subtract these, we get six, and again, the units of any statistic is the same as the units for your variable, six inches, okay? So what I recommend doing is hitting the pause button on this video and try example 10 on your own. See how far you can get with example 10. It's the same concept, but it is phrased a little bit differently. So let's see how you can do with example 10. And then once you have your best guess, it is a multiple choice question, unpause the video and come back to it. We'll be right here. All right, so continuing with this, let's look. The figure shows a cumulative relative frequency graph of the number of ounces of alcohol consumed per week in a sample of 150 adults about what percent of these adults consume between four and eight ounces per week. All right, so things that I always look for. I always look at how my axes are labeled and scaled. So I see consumption here in ounces. So my variable must be alcohol consumption. And typically it's alcohol consumption in one week. So we've got another continuous numerical variable. And I mentioned this because it's just always a good idea to start to, to ask, what is the variable in this problem? Um, my y-axis is percentages. And when it comes to cumulative graphs like this, graphs that always increase as you move left to right, it's, it's always nicer when they come with cumulative relative frequencies or percentages. I, I always feel it makes my life just slightly easier. Anytime you see the word relative, you know you're gonna be looking at percentages. Or, or decimals, and I've got a cumulative relative frequency graph. It's increasing. All right, I've got all of that. I had 150 folks in my sample, or 150 adults. Now, if I look at the, the setup, about what percent, so I see that they want a percent here. So that means they want Y values. About what percent of these adults consume between four and eight ounces per week? So four and eight ounces per week are X values. So I'm gonna go to four, and I'm gonna go to eight, and I'm gonna figure out what's going on there. So let me see what's going on with the x-coordinate of 4. So if I take a look at the x-coordinate of 4, to me that looks pretty close to 20%. All right, so if I were to think of this as an ordered pair, right, this is the ordered pair 4, 20, it means 20% of adults consumed four ounces of alcohol or less per week, okay? And you can try and figure out where you are on the scale. Sometimes I feel like I'm here. Sometimes I feel like I'm here. The next one I gotta do is eight ounces. So let's see what's going on with eight ounces. So that to me looks like it's hitting, ooh, my pen went a little haywire there. That looks like it's hitting at 60. So I think I will write this ordered pair, eight comma 60. So I just wanna make note of this. So the four ounces, that is the 20th percentile. Right, the eight ounces, that was the 60th percentile. So again, I could say here that 60% um, of adults consumed eight ounces or less in a week. Um, but this is what percent of these adults consumed between four and eight. And you can see the accumulation here. If 
were consuming four ounces or less a week and 60% were consuming eight or fewer ounces a week, then if I subtract these two percentages, 60 minus 20, that's gotta be the chunk of folks that were in between the four and eight ounces per week. So in terms of my answer, for the way this question is written, I'm gonna subtract those two percentages and that's gonna give me 40%. Okay. And even though it wasn't asked of you in this problem, I think it's still a good idea to kind of find the median and find the IQR. So let's just practice that. Again, I know it wasn't asked, but it doesn't hurt to, to try a few extra examples. So for the median, if I wanted the median, I would go up to the 50th percentile. So the 50th percentile is gonna be somewhere in here. I'll just do my best to approximate it, like right around there. So where do I think that 50th percentile is hitting? To me, the 50th percentile looks to be somewhere close to seven ounces. All right, so I'm just gonna put an approximation symbol because I'm not 100% sure. But I think that the median is around seven ounces. And again, on the median, you always wanna go halfway up your y-axis. All right, if I wanted to find the IQR, I'll put an approximate. I need to go 75% of the way up my y-axis. So 75 would be a little bit closer to 80 than 60. 75%, what do we think we're looking at? Maybe 15-ish. So I think 15, 75 might be here. I didn't write this ordered pair. We said this would have been 7, 50. Um, and then let me go 25% of the way up. 25% would be closer to 20 than to 40. So when I go up here, this looks a little bit closer to four. It's not quite at the halfway point, so I'm gonna say 4.5. So I think we have 4.5 comma 25. So in terms of the IQR, I think it's around 15 minus 4.5 which would be 10.5 uh, ounces. So I think the IQR is somewhere around 10 and a half ounces. And again, this is all just approximate. Uh, I'm just um, playing the guessing game. For the multiple choice, even if you hadn't exactly picked 60 and 20, the only viable answer would have been part B.